I'm going to show you how to use a serial connection in two steps. First, we're just going to set up a serial connection to the Arduino and just display the values that the Arduino is reading. Um, then as a second step, we'll incorporate that into a larger program so that you can use the button state to do something interesting graphically. All right, so here's the program that I've provided you. There's only really four important lines here. The first is you declare a serial object called my port, and we're going to read the port name. Computers have several serial ports. They're just different communication channels that they can be listening on. So we have to make sure that we're going to be listening on the same channel that the Arduino is plugged into. Usually this is going to be the first serial channel in the list. So when I say serial.list, that gives me an array of uh, port names. And then I'm accessing element zero. I'm using this to create a new serial object here. Uh, when I create the serial object, I pass it this, which is the current P applet. I give it the port name that I want it to be listening on. And this 9600, that's the speed that we're going to be listening at. Um, it's important that you set your Arduino so that it is trying to communicate at exactly that same speed. If you remember before, we said serial.begin9600. That's just telling it the speed at which it's trying to communicate. All right, so all of those lines of code are required to set up your serial object. When the time comes to actually listen to the serial channel to see what the Arduino is trying to say, all you have to do is say my port, which is the name of your serial object, and run the method read string. It's going to return whatever string the Arduino has just sent. And that's it. You might notice, though, that uh, we have some compile time errors here. So there's a number of configuration things that you need to do whenever you want to use the serial object. This is a little bit comp complicated, so I have it written down for you. But here's what you need to do. Um, you have to include some jar files. And then something new that you've never done before, you have to put a dynamic link library file in a particular place in your file system. Let's do the two steps one at a time. So I'll right click on my project and I'll go to properties. I'm here at Java build path libraries. And I'm going to add external jars. You're going to want to find your processing folder. I'm using the most recent version of processing. Warning that if you're using a, an older version of processing, these files might be called different. Well, in fact, they are called different things. And so this isn't going to work for you. So here I am inside processing. The first thing you need to do, of course, is include core.jar, that part you're used to. But we also need to include uh, a couple of jar files that are specifically for serial communication. They're going to be inside modes, Java, libraries, serial. Here we are inside library. You need to include both of these jar files. And I click OK. And now it recognizes what the object is. If I try and run it, though, you'll see it throws an exception. And it says there's an unsatisfied link error. What's happening is the jar file tries to refer to code, but the code that the jar file refers to isn't actually inside the jar file. It's inside a thing called a dynamically linked library. Um, the file extension is .dll. So we have to take that file, and we have to put it inside the same folder that the compiled program that we're trying to run exists. So let's do that. Here. I'm going to go to processing. And I'm going to go to that same location inside modes, Java, libraries, serial, library. All right, I'm using a 64-bit version. So I'm going to use the 64-bit dynamic linked library. If you're using a 32-bit version, you should use that one instead. So here I am, 64. There's the DLL file. I'm going to copy it by hitting Control C. And now I have to find in my file system, where is this project? So for me, my workspace is inside David Dobrovich. And here's Arduino.com. So you see Arduino.com is the name of my project. And now I'm in the folder Arduino.com. And this source is where all your source files are. Instead of inside source, there should be a bin folder, which stands for binaries. 
inside the bin folder, that's where I'm going to paste this dynamically linked library. Now when I run the program again, it's able to find it. 